Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. SHOT Show is approximately a week and a half away, and many new announcements will be made of firearms that they plan to release in 2023. Many of the manufacturers, they keep it a secret prior to SHOT, but others have been revealed, and some have already been released, so they're actually 2022s, but there are certain ones that don't excite me at all, that I'm not going to chase after. It just doesn't have that zeal. You know, when you stop at a red light and you purchase a handgun and you, you quickly grab it and then throw it back in the case before the light turns green, that's excitement. The ones that I'm about to speak about, they just don't excite me. And the first one is the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. For an MSRP of $600, I am struggling to figure out what makes it so special. They have the Shield line, they have the Shield Plus, they have all that stuff, but then they came out with the Equalizer, and it has a, a grip safety on there, a little wider serration, some other features, and people are making a big deal about it. Maybe it's a great gun. If I have a chance to review it, I'll do that, but I'm just not excited at all about the Equalizer, and I have no intention of ever owning one. The second one is the Anderson Kiger. You may not have heard this. It's called the 9C. It has an MSRP of $430, but it's a Glock pattern handgun. Very similar. And I think a lot of the Glock pattern manufacturers out there, they, they want to capture that aftermarket support that Glock has. Oh yeah, this will swap it out for Glock trigger, Glock sights, you know, guide rod, whatever. And yet, I am so tired of Glock pattern handguns. Am, am I the only one here? Like every, every new handgun seems to be a Glock pattern handgun. Well, perhaps just get a Glock or save a few bucks and get this or that. But the Kiger just doesn't do it for me. It, it, it seems okay, but I don't have that excitement to check out the Kiger. Next was just introduced, the Rock Island 5.0. It has an MSRP 998. Here's an opportunity for Rock Island to come out with a 17 round mag, five inch barrel, optic ready, but they didn't make it optic ready. Now, I fought optics for years, and then I got a little spoiled. Now I'm like a little girl, I want an optic on there, and I don't always want an optic, but I want the option to put an optic on there. Because, like I said, I've gotten a little spoiled. I've, I've learned to understand the benefits of a red dot on a handgun. Having that availability is nice. They didn't do it there. I'm sure it's going to shoot fine, but it when I see it, there's there's nothing there that stands out at me and says, I, I really need to check out this handgun. Now, there is one specifically that I saw three or four years ago. It was revealed at SHOT Show. I said, I will wait in line from Michigan to Florida to get my hands on a Dan Wesson DWX. And they put it off, and it got hit with some COVID things, and it was put off to the side. Well, now they introduced it and are releasing the Dan Wesson DWX. Beautiful handgun. Uh, it, it was just amazing when I saw it in person three or four years ago. However, once again, they didn't make it optic ready. And that specific platform of handgun should be optic ready. Now, I think they will in the future, and when they do, I will be chasing after that one, just not right now, because with that short, light trigger pull, throwing an optic on there makes it so easy and, and fun, and I think it offers a lot, but I'm going to hold out for the optic ready. When Savage introduced that they were making 1911s, there was all this excitement. People were like, I, I, I have to get my hands on one. And so I jumped over to my computer and said, what's so exciting about the Savage 1911? And as I saw them, they have, I believe, six models. The answer is nothing. It's a 1911. Now, 1911s excite me. I love 1911s. I will say that. If I get a chance to review one, possibly own one, if it turns out to be so amazing, I would do that. But I just don't see it for $1,350 and an additional $150 to have a rail on a 1911. I just don't see what makes it so exciting where you say, I have to get my hands on one. Maybe you're a Savage fan and, and you want to build your collection of Savages. Maybe you're just a 1911 fan and want all these like that. I, I'm like that. But the Savage, I, I just don't, I just don't feel it. 
When Glock introduces a handgun, everybody's head spins. And they introduced the Glock 47. You say, well, you can't get that. It's made for the Border Patrol. Well, that's true, but it is available on the blue label market. Okay, law enforcement, firefighters. And I purchased Glocks from people that bought blue label. They get that discount there, which is certainly cool. It's under $500 blue label. It is available. It's going to make its way out into the civilian market. And there will be opportunities to get that. Now, why am I not interested? It's basically a Glock 17 MOS. I see very few changes other than they're going to have inscribed on their BP for Border Patrol. If that excites you, great. If you're part of the Border Patrol, great. If you're not, I don't see anything there that makes anybody want to chase after it. It's just it's just not an exciting launch for Glock. I hope they come out with something different. Perhaps they will, but as far as the 47 goes, big deal. I've been a high power fan. I have the original Browning High Power Mark III. Single action trigger's not great. Nice gun, but it's been copied already with Gear Sign, Springfield Armory, and now FN. The FN high power looks to be the most refined, but it's selling for thirteen hundred bucks. And I, I think in, you know that like you can get a Belgium made Browning high power for less than that, and they have skyrocketed in price. So for thirteen hundred dollars, I just think it's way overpriced. If they drop that down to maybe eight fifty, like that's a big drop. I, I get it. But maybe it would do a little better and perhaps even excite me. But I have not experienced anything other than my original Browning High Power in that pattern. As far as the Springfield or the Gearson goes. And I certainly won't be doing it with the FN High Power because it's priced outrageously high. Like more than Browning, when they produced them, sold the High Power model. So those are my... Seven. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. If I get a chance to review these, I will, but it just doesn't interest me at this moment. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.